Hey everybody, thanks for watching another one of our prayer videos. You know, one of my favorite practice of uh, one of my favorite practices in prayer is taking a scripture and using that scripture as a model for the way we pray. Um, when you have it, have a habit of daily prayer, and you're going before the Lord every single day. You know, prayer can sometimes become a little routine or a little bit uh, dull, or even just seem a bit redundant. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I love this practice of prayers, because it can keep things fresh and interesting. And it's one of the reasons that I personally read the Bible every single day prior to my prayer time. Uh, one of the things that that does is it helps me renew my mind and start thinking the thoughts of God before I approach God in prayer. Because I want to pray God-sized prayers, not just Danny-sized prayers. And so I like to spend time in the Word and renew my thinking. But secondly, it's because I love praying the scriptures. And I want to share with you about how I do that. Um, I'm always, when I read the Bible every single day, I've got a Bible reading plan that takes me through the scriptures over the year. I'm always on the hunt as I'm, I'm searching them and I'm reading. I'm on the hunt for, okay, would this be a scripture that I could use and I could pray through and help me have a, a fresh perspective during my prayer time? I love this type of prayer for a couple reasons. Number one, uh, praying the scriptures, it keeps me centered on the will of God. Now, we talked about this a few episodes ago, but it's very important for us to pray according to God's will and not just pray whatever we want. And I know that when I pray the Bible, I'm praying the will of God. At least it keeps me centered and I can be more certain and pray with more boldness and more faith because I know I'm praying according to the scriptures. I know that the Bible contains the will of God and that the scriptures are his will. And so it's easier to pray in faith that way. And the second thing it does uh, is it helps the word of God go from my head down into my heart. And man, I think if there's one thing that the Lord's really emphasized for me during this first seven days of 21 days of prayer and fasting, it's been this concept that God, I don't wanna be a believer that just knows you and knows about you in my head. Lord, I want heart faith. I want to believe in my heart. Um, it's been something I've really been spending a lot of time thinking about and pondering. Have you ever been around somebody when um, they make a mistake or uh, they're doing something a little incorrectly and you, you know, maybe someone at work or something and you come alongside them and you're trying to teach them, you know, the correct procedure for something or a little bit of a better way to, to navigate a problem and their attitudes like this. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Um, that can be so irritating as a teacher or as a leader. You're trying to teach them and all you get is, I know, I know, I know, I know. Um, that's somebody that's got head knowledge of something. Maybe, maybe they have head knowledge, uh, but they don't have heart knowledge. The difference between head knowledge and heart knowledge is you can grasp a concept in your head, but until it really gets to your heart, it's hard to see your life transformed to the place where you're actually living out that truth. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 8 tells us that knowledge has a tendency to puff up. It says it puffs up, meaning that head knowledge can make you proud. And when you're proud, you don't normally pray because a proud person instinctively thinks that they don't really need God. And since they don't really need God, they can do it all on their own, then they don't make time for prayer. So I don't want just head knowledge about the Bible. I don't want just head knowledge about the character of God. Um, I want more than that. I want heart knowledge. And this is the type of knowledge, heart knowledge, that transforms my thoughts, transforms my attitudes, transforms my actions. Uh, I'm trying to focus more and more on heart this year. Um, when you believe the word of God, not only with your head, but with your heart, amazing things happen. And praying a scripture is actually one of the most important and effective ways to get truth from the word of God, just from your head, you cognitively understanding it down into your heart where it can transform you. So for the rest of this episode, I want to just take one of my favorite scriptures and kind of show you how I do that. I want to break it apart. I want to pray it so you could apply this uh, to your life. And this is the scripture. I'm going to share this with you. Hosea chapter 10, verse 12. It says this, break up your fallow ground for it is time to seek the Lord till he comes and rains righteousness on you. That's actually not even a full verse. It's half a verse. And so this is going to be cool. We're going to pray this part of a verse here, and you're going to just see uh, how this works and taking something that you might grasp with your head and, and moving it to your heart. So like I would start out like this. The first little sections, break up your fallow ground. And I might just focus on the word your. Break up your fallow ground. And I might pray a prayer like this. God, 
Right now, I take personal responsibility for the fallow ground of my heart. Uh, Lord, it's not just anyone's fallow ground, it's my fallow ground. And I choose to break that up right now. Lord, I know that there are, are times where um, it's just so easy to try to duck to the right or the left and to blame other people and assume that the things that are going wrong in my life, they're the fault of other people. But Lord, right now, I take responsibility for these circumstances and what's happening and even the pain in my life. Lord, it's my fallow ground. And so I receive responsibility right now in Jesus' name. And after that, I might pray something like this about the fallow ground. Um, so we break up your fallow ground. God, Lord, you see the fallow ground in my heart. And Lord, you know the, the hard places inside of me, Lord, that need to be dealt with. And God, I ask right now, uh, Lord, that you would help come and you would help soften those areas of my heart. Lord, I don't wanna be hard toward you at all, God. Lord, but I wanna be soft and teachable and pliable. And Lord, I want you to be able to plant a seed of the word of God in my heart. And I want it to bear fruit and change me and change my family and change the ministry that you've given me, God. So God, right now, Lord, I pray that soften my heart, Lord, to receive all that you have for me. The next part of the scripture says, for it's time, for it's time. I might pray something like this. God, this is the time. Now's the time to seek you. I pray, God, that I wouldn't be a procrastinator, that I wouldn't wait and try to deal with these hard areas of my heart at another time. Or God, that I would, you know, think that in another season that this would be more appropriate. Lord, I want to deal with my sin in my life now. It's time. Today is the day. There's never been a better day to repent and to move forward in you than today. So God, I just claim this is the time of my heart becoming soft before you. The next part says, it's time to seek the Lord. And so we, we could pray something like this. God, I want this to be a season where I'm seeking you. I don't want to spend this 21 days of prayer seeking things or seeking comfort or seeking other things. God, I want to seek you in this time. And so I pray, Lord, that you would build a depth of relationship between me and you over this time. God, Lord, help me seek you first before anything you give. God, I want to be one that sees your face and, Lord, doesn't just go after the things that are with your hands or the things that you're doing or the things that you're giving. But I want you. I want you with all of my heart. It's time to seek the Lord. And then we're kind of coming to the end of the verse. The, the transitionary word here is until, right? So until he comes and rage righteousness on you. Um, and, and I might pray a prayer like this for that word until. God, I got to pray until you come and rain righteousness on me. So even like Pastor Jamie preached on Sunday that we need to be persistent in prayer. God, I help, help me, God, to be persistent to continue to pursue you and to continue to ask and seek and knock until you come and you rain righteousness on me. Lord, I, wanna, I don't wanna give up too soon and miss the miracles that you wanna do in my life. So God, grow in me a tenacity and a persistence to pursue you, Lord, until the breakthrough comes. God, I wanna pray until I receive an answer from you in Jesus' name. And the last thing is, is uh, until he comes and he rains righteousness on you. So you could round out the prayer like this. God, today I receive the righteousness that comes through faith. Lord, I know it's only through Jesus that I could ever be made righteous, or I could ever be made righteous. And so right now, I thank you for that righteousness that comes from Christ. And I pray that, God, everyone in my sphere of influence, they would be blessed by the fruit of righteousness in my life. Lord, would you rain down, Lord, a fresh understanding, a fresh revelation of your righteousness. And I pray that it would touch my kids and my wife and my coworkers and my friends and my family. Lord, just visit us all with your righteousness in the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. So we prayed for several minutes just on that one little verse, breaking it down and, and using it, right? So that's something that you can do with all kinds of verses. Uh, a great book, if you wanna practice this type of prayer, is the book of Psalms, right? The book of Psalms is the prayer book of the Bible and it's filled with Psalms that you could use uh, in this way as you pray to God. In fact, Every single video in this series, uh, it, we, we probably have some principle and have quoted some scriptures that you could use in praying in this same type of way. So maybe you want to go back and rewatch some videos, or maybe you're just catching this one for the first time and you could go back. Um, but all the videos that are coming in the rest of the series too, use these not only as just head knowledge, but watch these and then pray these principles in your own prayer times and watch what God does in your heart over the rest of these 21 days. It's gonna be awesome. 
Uh, let me pray for you as we close this video, and then, then we'll see you next time. Father, I thank you for everyone watching this video today. And God, I pray that you would bless them, Lord, and that you would strengthen them and that you would encourage them in their prayer life. Lord, I pray that you would take them beyond just head knowledge and just surface level understanding of your word and of your principles. And God, you would change their hearts, Lord, just like you're changing my heart. Lord, help us move from the head to the heart and transform our thoughts and our attitudes and our actions to look more like you, Jesus. Lord, we love you. Continue to encourage us in prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good to see you again. God bless you. We'll see you next time.